Welcome to another gripping Enigmas of the Ancient World video. I'm Luke, and uh, welcome back to Abu Rubaj. And uh, this time, with the special permissions, I was allowed to bring my video camera. And so I finally got some video footage of this uh, really interesting uh, and very different site. And so... Uh, Back when the world was young and beautiful, I made a video on uh, Zayat el Aryan and Abu Rawash, uh, which I consider to be sister pyramids, uh, and they're very different from all the other pyramids that we know of. And I think there's uh, possibly some good reasons for that. So um, I would really recommend watching that other video um, for a deeper. A more detailed background of Barsanti's excavations of Zayat and his commentary on this site and the incredible similarities between them and some of the really weird stuff. Zayat al Aryan, the sister pyramid, is the one that's underneath the military base that we'll never get in to see. We just have Barsanti's account and his pictures of uh, what that site was all about. But it is almost identical to this site, uh, a tiny fraction larger. Uh, about the same size, uh, finished as the uh, current third Great Pyramid um, on the Giza Plateau. This gentleman here in the stripy shirt uh, was the archaeologist who looked after us uh, that day. He was a, a very nice guy, and he briefly explained to us that the official position is that uh, this pyramid uh, was not complete, because it was supposed to be just over 100 meters high, and they know that Jedef Ra, whose pyramid this supposedly is, only reigned for eight years, and you cannot build a pyramid of this size in eight years. We'll get to that later. Um, first, we're going to examine this incredible piece of granite, and I'm actually going to let uh, Yusuf do the talking. Um, I have a, a camera that's uh, much better for recording sound and a better mic, so here we go. We look at this piece, get closer to examine, and see the tool marks, even on a curvy surface like that, you still have these power tool marks. And it's concave too. Yeah, I was going to say that. Exactly. And they've come this way, the tool has come yeah. this way, and the curve is that way. Hmm. So how is that tool mark even? Did it Like I would think only like this kind of cut right here, if I have something going this way. Yeah. Something rotating that way, like that. Right. And it will cause that shape. Only on a small scale. But if this is some kind of a saw, it, it must be going that way. Maybe it's not a saw. <laughs> the plot thickens. You see the teeth marks? Yeah, I mean the striations are like a, maybe a millimeter apart, yeah. maybe two. So what kind of pressure is that to go mm. through granite? And this looks like the inside of, because we have this edge here, mm -hmm. which is going to be raising. Marks? You can see like between the, oh, just the, the striations. Yeah. Yeah. Especially this part here is looking so mysterious to me. <coughs> You cannot think of a straight saw here at all, in my opinion, since it's curved to the inside like that. There's a, something that's happened here too on the outside, right? The, here? Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating piece. Uh, it defies the, the usual story of the uh, the saw 
and uh, perhaps offers us uh, an idea of a different tool we should be looking for. You can see the curve there uh, in these uh, photograph close-ups, and here you can you can get an idea of the. It's the same thing we see at Abu Sir. It tends to create a lip. There's a little stutter here and there. It's got these uh, these lines that are a little bit wobbly, but uh, very close together, and there's a tremendous amount of pressure to create that. So that's an interesting idea from Yusuf uh, regarding the, the tool that would move sideways uh, and possibly uh, be able to so easily smooth uh, and cut uh, a curved surface like that and might also explain some of these mysterious lip um, grooves that we get on various pieces from this time. To. Now I adjusted the uh, the contrast here a little so we could see a little deeper into the boat pit. Now the boat pit here, um, there was no boat found in it. And instead, what was found in it were, uh, according uh, to Egyptology, uh, over a hundred statues of Jedef Ra and some of his children. According to the gentleman, the archaeologist who's with us today, because I tried to verify that, he said there were a couple of statues in there. So I was like, like a hundred, and he was like, there were a few. So um, maybe not even that many statues. That is, of course, how they attribute this pyramid uh, to Jedefra, is those statues found in a pit. Um, and there was also a statue of Menkaura found in the pit, and so they created a story of uh, Menkaura doing a repair of the pyramid. And that's why his statue is in there. Of course, there's no proof of any of this or from anywhere else. And, uh, you know, why Menkara would have to be repairing a pyramid that uh, they say hadn't even been finished. Well, doesn't make a lot of sense in my book. So it fits in uh, very well with the other Fourth Dynasty pyramids in that it has a really terribly sketchy backstory that has very little factual basis. But according to the archaeologists who live in the site, he says just to reach that location that we believe it could be the valley temple of this pyramid, it's more than two kilometers, around two and a half kilometers far away from here. But the excavation there is hard because the location that the archaeologists believe that it's the valley temple is under the houses and also part of it is under a military base, so there is no way to excavate. <laughs> we can see parts of these has been recycled. So we understand that they used to be like, they already took apart from here, that was how big it was, and they already took apart from here, but we can see that angle reminds us a little bit with the stones that is surrounding the middle pyramid of Ka'afra. So or two stars. Huge blocks of granite stone were brought here from Aswan. And you can see lots of it was reused in building. So, of course, uh, an immense amount of red granite here, uh, as well as the white Tura limestone, both of which encased uh, the exterior of this pyramid. It's another reason why, of course, uh, this pyramid was complete. All the casing stones are here, and some of them are still uh, attached. Uh, these are remnants of the red granite casing stones right here. And if you, by the way, all of the small stone walls that are here, like those ones way off in the distance that mark the perimeter of the site, and all the ones we walked past on the way over here, etc., those are all rocks uh, that are have come from larger stone blocks that were part of the pyramid that have been smashed up during the quarrying process over thousands of years and hauled away in order to make buildings for the locals and the Romans. This was also a Roman military base for a long time. And I, I want to make a correction really quickly right here. What we're walking on, in the last video I said this was the causeway. It does follow the path and direction of the causeway. It is not actually the causeway. What this is, is all of the stone that has been removed from the pyramid uh, since uh, they started working on it. And this took uh, a team of more than 100 men uh, more than 11 years.
to move. And it's pretty much a half mile long road, 30 feet wide, uh, 20 some feet tall. I don't know what those dimensions are, but you can have a look there. That's huge. It's really long and it's all made of stone filler that's come out of that pyramid. Um, so you heard, of course, there's no valley temple here. There are some small mortuary temples that have been recreated with the mudrick by the side of the pyramid, but there's no valley temple, and uh, they believe it may be under a nearby military base. Uh, shades of Zoyat there. If it is, uh, you'll never see it. So this is the, uh, the entrance, the ramp that goes down into uh, the rectangular-shaped um, room or area. And if you saw the other video of Zoyat el Aryan, what they called the Great Pit of Zoyat el Aryan, it's exactly the same. It's identical, it's fractionally larger. Uh, but that one was still unquarried um, when Barsanti got in there. Uh, the pyramid above was gone, but this main shaft had not been excavated, and it was filled with. Uh, 30 meters worth, uh, roughly, of interlocking granite and limestone. Granite, of course, like the granite here on the casing stones, came from Mass 1. And uh, on this uh, ramp going down, on either side, left and right, there would have been a staircase, and there would have been a, a flat area in the middle that went down. And the pathway down the middle would have been red granite, and it would have uh, turned right, and the limestone would have been interlocking around it, and there would have been a vat underneath there, sealed, uh, if it was identical to Zoyat, which I believe it completely is. And uh, that's a tale I tell in the other video. So from everything I've seen of the two sites, they're identical. Um, I think we can assume this is, had exactly the same purpose and was built the same way and had the same interior structure. It's just all been quarried. This is the, the top, uh, such as it is now. Um, Giza Plateau in the distance, and uh, you can see the, the big two, but not not really the third. So bear that in mind, uh, so we'll talk about uh, Dr. Hawass's latest interesting statement rec recently in a minute. So uh, this is uh, the great pit or shaft from above. Uh, let me tell you, I experienced some real vertigo for the first time in my life. I've never experienced it before. Uh, I did not want to get close to the edge. I eventually got close to the edge and got the camera over, but um, I felt really, really dizzy. And I, I wanted to uh, to hold on to something really bad while I was up there. And uh, the interesting thing was other people were experiencing vertigo at the bottom uh, of the shaft, and the point where it seemed strongest seemed to be about where uh, the vat would have been uh, if this was Zoyat el Aryan, or if indeed it had the same vat underneath all of the interlocking granite and limestone. Uh, so it's about 30 meters deep. Uh, that's the same as the one at Zoyat, uh, the same also incidentally as the Step Pyramid of Zoser, which has a central shaft, which is 30, minute, uh, 30 meters deep. That one, of course, has a 32-piece interlocking granite box at the bottom of it, which uh, I've had the opportunity to see a couple times and is, is really interesting, along with some other very interesting stuff down there, too. They say there's nothing else under this pyramid. I'm completely unconvinced that they have any idea one way or another. Uh, they haven't found anything else, uh, so they say, underneath this pyramid. But I can tell you that nearby there is another Serapium, what they're calling a Serapium. Uh, and it's a set of underground caverns uh, hollowed out of the bedrock with separate rooms. Uh, some of these underground areas go for uh, a long way and connect to each other. As far as I know, there have been no... Uh, large boxes found in there. Uh, a lot of it still needs to be. I think most of the work that's been done already was done by looters, and uh, it needs a real team to go in there and remove um, tens and tens of tons of, of loose rocks about the size of uh, uh, of my fist that are just lying everywhere uh, inside there. So this is the the ramp down again. There would have been a staircase on either side if it was like Zoyat, uh, and a, a smoother ramp in the middle. Um, whether they had some kind of mechanism on the side uh, for bringing things in and out, I don't know. 
when Barsanti excavated the Sister Pyramid, he had to move all of the interlocking granite uh, and limestone back up this ramp, and it took him years and was a very unpleasant job. But So he was very excited. He found this vat at the bottom. Under all his 30 meters of interlocking granite and limestone, he found this sealed vat, uh, sealed with uh, lime and clay, and obviously undisturbed under 30 meters of interlocking granite that, that he removed, Barsanti removed. And he was very excited. He thought he was going to find something. Uh, the pharaohs remained some great treasure, something. Um, and uh, when he opened it, there was nothing inside except uh, at like a 10 centimeter high ring of black residue. So they've put something underneath uh, these two pyramids uh, inside uh, a granite box connected up to the surface by a pathway of granite. So that vat is always touching granite all the way up to the surface. And then that's layered underneath and insulated with limestone and... I, I don't, I don't pretend to understand it, but they did something very specific, and that's not to me. That's not an offering. You don't bury an offering underneath, uh, you know, thirty meters of granite. Um, you, you refresh offerings. You renew offerings. You make a place where people come and leave the offerings. Um, that's kind of how that works. To me, that's more like a battery or, <laughs> or something that you wanted to remain sealed and buried for all time. Uh, you can see on the walls looking up around here uh, remains of water, uh, mortar Sorry, uh, at just about every stage in, in various places up the wall. And so um, that, uh, in Yusuf's opinion, um, indicates that the fill-in inside this uh, shaft or pit was complete. Like they had interlocked all that stuff. It was done. It was finished. And he believes, as I do, uh, that this pyramid, um, and I believe Zoyat also, uh, were, were complete. This pyramid, if you look back in the literature, is referred to as Jedefra's Starry Sky, uh, probably because it was red and white and up on the top of that mountain uh, where they've cleared the, the top of the plateau to build the pyramid. I'm sure it was stunning. Um, so right around where uh, Drew and uh, Marie are sitting is where that uh, vat would have been. So there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, the construction is completely different from all the other pyramids except Zoyat. Um, and maybe the, the Step Pyramid. I, the, the idea of a lot of uh, the old dynasty pyramids was uh, you, you have a primordial mound that's connected into the bedrock and into the earth. And you, you build around that and you attach the pyramid to that mound. And then you build the pyramid and maybe the floor. Uh, around it, like uh, the second pyramid, if you saw the molten granite video uh, I just posted as well. Uh, these ones are different. Zoyat and, and Abu Rawash are different because uh, the there is a, a bedrock central mound, but they've excavated the center of that mound, and they've taken it out, and then put something inside it, and then filled it in a very complex, uh, expensive, and difficult way with interlocking granite and limestone. Uh, that where Marie and Drew are standing right there, they were both, uh, among a couple of people, experiencing really strong vertigo right there. And that's right about where the vat would have been. So this is, uh, again, it's an interesting site. I was told a pretty wild tale about this site last time I was in Egypt. Uh, that maybe I'll repeat one day. Um, but, you know, pyramids are different. Uh, I, I think uh, it's possible that they might all serve uh, different parts of the same purpose. Um, I, as far as I know, no two are really exact. This one and Zoyat probably come the closest. So we're going to, we're going to walk out of here and I'm going to do a perimeter walk around the rest of the pyramid, because it just hasn't been seen. People haven't seen this pyramid, so... Um, we've looked at the most interesting stuff, but it's nice to have a, a look around. And what you'll see as we walk around the outside, too, is uh, how much of the uh, plateau, this hilltop, this mountaintop, has been cleared flat, and then... Uh, 
they've excavated around this bedrock mound and then carved this shape down into the bedrock mound and then started to attach the rest of the pyramid to the outside of the bedrock mound. And I think this was probably an extremely stable uh, pyramid when it was complete. Uh, but it's been, among other sites, aggressively quarried for millennia. So again, these walls here that we're looking at, all this sto uh, small stone stuff is uh, remnants of these stones, which have been smashed into small pieces so they could be carted away uh, and houses, etc. could be built out of them. When Petrie was here in the late 1800s, uh, more than 100 camel trains a day were leaving um, the site uh, filled with uh, with stone. So you can imagine how long that went on for, and and that's and then how much is still actually left. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, at Giza, for example, so much of those structures were were quarried, and yet <laughs> it's an immense amount left. It's it's really amazing. So let me talk about Zahi for a second, Doctor Hawass. Uh, he made a, a comment recently in the media about um, the pyramids not taking very long to build and not being very hard to build because they were all bedrock uh, and the Great Pyramid maybe had a million blocks of stone, if that, you know, nothing really. So I invite you to take a, a look at the uh, Molten Granite video I, I made the other day about the Second Pyramid to show you that they actually carved that entire area out of the bedrock to make room for the pyramid and then built paving stones around uh, maybe uh, six meters six meters deep uh, to create a flat surface and then built the pyramid <laughs> after after all that and there is some bedrock absolutely there's a there's a mound and uh, one of the corners in particular has a lot of bedrock the second pyramid but it's not 85% bedrock, and it's not 1 million blocks. This is Belel, this is Motaha's son, and he was Grady's junior archaeologist. He dragged me into a lot of uh, really crazy places to look at stuff he had found, and he did find some cool stuff. And there's a lot of uh, shells up here. We're not sure whether they're seashells or whether maybe they are actually freshwater uh, shells, maybe the Nile had come up here at some point, which would have been uh, very interesting because this is a it's a high elevation, so they're probably seashells. Um, and it is a high elevation. You'll see again, you know, the the pyramids in the distance and uh, how we seem to be on an eye level with the peak um, and of the Great Pyramids when you're standing on the ground level here. And so it's a massive effort to clear the top of this mountain and then core out that uh, bedrock centerpiece and then build build into and around it. I'm really belaboring that point, but it's a, it's a very different construction. I think it, it takes uh, an immense amount of uh, uh, engineering and, uh, and technique, as well as posing all the additional logistical problems. So you're bringing the granite thousand kilometers but now you've also got to bring it from the Nile up this hill up this mountainside before you know then attaching it to the pyramid it's just absolutely uh, staggering and you can see there's there's a lot more stuff going on here lower levels um, I am not convinced that uh, this place is fully excavated at all as I said that new Serapium is maybe a half kilometer from here uh, the staircase that disappears down into uh, the ground and eventually the, uh, the water level uh, is less than a kilometer from here. Uh, they found a boat, uh, an actual solar boat type boat, uh, about a, a kilometer from here as well. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff to be found, uh, obviously. But as you look here, take a look, you can see that bedrock in the center there that they have uh, you know, built grooves into and then attached the courses of stones, much like uh, Hentic House on the, uh, the Giza Plateau, which is actually a really beautiful uh, core to go and, and walk around if you have some time on the plateau. It's 
So we've got a tour coming up. This is a private permission. It's uh, not an easy to access site. So if you would like to see this uh, site, we are going again in February of 2020. Uh, we have six other special permissions in addition to that one. Um, just a, a really jam-packed tour um, with the Nile cruise as well. So you'll have a, a, a day or two to catch your breath in the middle. Um, so there'll be some information here at the end of this video. And you can uh, check out the websites and see what you think. Thank you for watching. Um, there will be some more videos coming in the middle of a big uh, software switchover, which uh, is not interesting to you, but uh, hopefully will improve things from my end. Sanity-wise. And uh, yeah, I suppose I can show you this while we're here at the end. Um, as well, this uh, this is the only statue of Jeddah Ra I could find in the museum that was supposedly found here. And uh, this is a plate that was found here, or a bowl that was found here, alabaster bowl, and it has the uh, Nebti name outside uh, the cartouche, and inside the cartouche is the name of Khufu. And from that, Egyptology tells us that Khufu was here. He came to the site. He blessed it. It all unrolled according to his great plan. And we know that because they found a bowl that had Khufu's name scratched into it. It's all it's all pretty shady. This, uh, this Khufu is a questionable questionable fellow. You know, the the only statue we have of this guy is about three inches tall. It was found in Abydos, and it was made in the twenty sixth dynasty. So work that one out. Okay, so um, that was Abu Rawash. Uh, we kind of blasted through there. I uh, <laughs> get on a plane tomorrow morning. I'm just smashing all this stuff out as I can at the end. It's all getting a bit squashed. But anyway, I, if you want to come to this site yourself and many other cool sites with special permissions, uh, you can, if you come with us, you can go inside the Assyrian. You can go to Abu Sir and the Sun Temple at Abu Jarab. Uh, you can go underneath the Step Pyramid, uh, Abu Rawash, uh, you know, have uh, time inside the Great Pyramid after it's closed and there's nobody else inside, as well as the Osiris Shaft and Tomb and the Nile Cruise. This is where your interest lies in Egypt, uh, the special stuff. This is the trip for you, so join Yusuf and I, February 2020, in Egypt. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.